Alright everybody, I'm back here with a new video. I took a little bit of a break because I'm actually thinking right now of changing up my content a little bit. So in the past, I've done a lot of Bitcoin TA videos and I will continue to make those TA videos, but I kind of want to focus on other things about, for instance, the economy and as well explain to you guys why Bitcoin is so important. What I saw here on YouTube is that a lot of people were making TA videos. You know, we have, for instance, the moon, BitBoy Crypto and Da Vinci J15, they're all great guys of course, but I feel there's not enough education about what Bitcoin actually is. And in the end of the video, I'm as well going to criticize some of the content here because I feel that a lot of people are not talking about the fact on why Bitcoin is going up and why we have to pay attention to what is right now going on in the economy. Because if we just focus on the price going up and up and up and making profits, we might actually still lose money in the long term. I will tell you guys how this exactly works. But first, let's actually look here at the stock market because we have to start at what the stock market is right now doing. So what we saw here back in 2008 was a huge financial crisis and the Federal Reserve, that is the central bank of the United States, they came in and they so-called saved the economy by printing money. And their idea was if we're going to print money and give this to companies, we're going to potentially help those companies and we keep employment high and that way we can potentially save the economy from potentially going bankrupt. Now the downside is, is when you print money, actually what happens is that the value of your currency goes down. So if you, for instance, print more money, then you can potentially pay less with the money that you have in your bank account. Your savings will decrease because by printing money, you're not actually increasing the productivity. You're only increasing the supply of money. And so the supply of money has to be divided with the products that are available. And if you print more, then eventually costs will go up. And so what we're actually right now seeing is something very, very interesting. And that is that since this QE program in 2008, we have not seen the stock market actually go down. We have seen a constant, constant move here to the upside. And there appears to be no end of this trend. Now, why is this happening? Because we are devaluing our currencies. We are pumping money into the system. And most of this money is going to assets markets. And what you can actually see is that a lot of rich people are actually understanding this. They are understanding that their cash is devaluing. And so they are putting their money in things like assets, in things like gold, because the government can't print those things. And so what we actually saw is that a lot of money was put here in the stock market. A lot of people were over levered. They were lending money with the idea of making more money. And so what actually happened here in March of last year, something very important, the coronavirus happened and a lot of people were over leveraged. They had way too much money in the stock market and everyone was starting to stress out and thinking like, I have to take up my money here because, you know, I don't have any money at all. Maybe there's going to be a big crash and then I can lose a lot of money. So you saw a very, very big sell off here on the stock market. This was a major sell off about 35%. Now, what actually happened here is did the government allow this stock market bubble, which was of course clearly a bubble, deflate and allowed the market to actually correct itself? No, they came in and they printed more money. So what you can actually see is that the fact that we had such a big correction here back in March of 2020 was a very clear indication that the stock market was in a bubble. And bubbles, they have to pop because if bubbles don't pop, they will continue to inflate and inflate. And at one point, the bubble is going to pop. And then, of course, if you make the bubble very, very big, that's going to have very negative effects on the economy. But, you know, the Federal Reserve, they keep printing up money. And now we're seeing stocks go to even much and much higher levels. Now, why is this important for Bitcoin? Well, what you can see actually here is that when we saw this huge stock market crash, we as well saw Bitcoin go down right over here back in March. And we as well saw a little bit of a stock market crash back in 2018. And then we saw Bitcoin as well go down. So there's quite a bit of correlation between the stock market and Bitcoin. And on the longer term, you can actually see here on the logarithmic chart, there is quite a bit of correlation. Both the Bitcoin price and the stock markets are correlated with each other. Now, why is the government so afraid of letting these stock market bubbles burst? We as well have, for instance, a big housing market bubble, and we're seeing housing prices go up and up. And this is, of course, very, very bad because if housing prices go up, the middle class have to pay a lot, a lot of rent. And so eventually you'd say like, hey, it's good if we let those bubbles burst. But no, why can't we let those bubbles burst? Well, if we allowed all of those bubbles to burst that we have created here in the economy by basically stimulating the economy with a bunch of cheap money, we're going to create massive unemployment. A lot of companies will, of course, go out of business because they're potentially not sustainable anymore. And that's, of course, going to result in people getting unemployed. And the government is saying this is very, very bad. Now, I actually disagree. I think that 
we have to let go of this bubble, it's going to give us some short term pain, but it will allow the economy to recover. It will actually clean up some of these companies. So there's more room for young people to actually start companies again and run them better. And of course, make the economy more productive. Um, but yeah, the government isn't doing that. They're basically saying like, no, we're going to print this much and much higher. And now we are seeing the stock markets go to even high levels. And this is clearly a bubble, guys. We have as well a very, very high debt. And so if they let this stock market bubble dip here to the downside, we'll see the US dollar deflate, which means the dollar goes up in value. And if that happens, the debts are going to be more and more expensive. And that could potentially result in the US just going completely bankrupt because they can no longer pay off their debts. And then um, that will probably be very, very bad for the US as well. So um, we've basically created an economy which can only do one thing, and that is keep asset prices high. Now the question is, we've seen a lot of money printing. Why are we not seeing huge inflation, for instance, for things like food or clothing? Well, as you guys know, we are right now in a coronavirus and we're basically forced to not spend money because we're forced to sit at home, be in lockdown. And so what you can see is that the volatility of the money is as well going down. And if the volatility of money goes down, that means that there's less spending and that can actually hold back inflation. It could as well potentially even cause deflation. So again, this is what the government is scared about because if we see deflation, we're going to see all of those assets bubbles pop, the debts will be more expensive, and then potentially the US, but also many other countries, you know, I'm using the US here as an example, but this is the same thing for many, many other countries. If we see deflation, we can no longer pay our debts. And so what you can see is that the velocity went down here and then the US government, they came in and they printed a lot, a lot of money. They printed, they printed trillions and trillions of US dollars in order to kind of balance out the inflation. And yeah, this is definitely insane. They're giving out all of those stimulus checks. A lot of people think that, you know, the government is just nice, but first of all, it's your own money, right? They're just printing more money. So the value of your currency goes down, but they're giving this money out in order to kind of keep the velocity going to kind of hold back inflation. Now, eventually what you're going to see is that the economy opens up again, and then the velocity is going to go up again. And all of this money that we just printed is going to go around the economy and you will see massive inflation, maybe even hyperinflation. And that is going to be absolutely crazy here. Right now, the money that we're printing is not really going yet around the economy, but once the economy does open up, you definitely will see inflation. And potentially if you have a lot of savings in US dollars and or you're dependent on a wage, your wages, your savings may go down quite a bit in terms of purchasing power. Now we're seeing as well here that companies are really preparing for this potential inflation, right? They're understanding what is right now going on. And for instance, Elon Musk here, he bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. And you know, if you're a Bitcoin skeptic, you might think that this is absolutely crazy. You might think, you know, Bitcoin doesn't produce anything. It is completely worthless. But what is very important here is that Bitcoin is a new form of money. It's a form of money which is not controlled by a government. The government cannot print more Bitcoin. And this is of course absolutely insane because we're basically separating state and money. And you can actually see when a government kind of manages the money, yeah, they're not very good at it. And so I think that the separation of state and money is a very, very good concept. It forces governments to be disciplined, to keep budgeting, to not go crazy on spending and debts, because if you do that, eventually, you know, there's not gonna be any kind of a bailout. Satoshi isn't going to give you your coins and so you will go bankrupt. And so I think that a separation of state and money is actually quite good here. And that's why you're seeing companies starting to buy Bitcoin because if some big hyperinflation does happen, which I think is eventually going to be the end goal, you potentially could use Bitcoin as a new form of medium of exchange. Now, again, we're seeing that those assets bubbles, they're constantly being inflated. Now, who's actually paying for this? Who is paying for these massive high asset prices? Well, it is mostly the middle class. We are diminishing the middle class here. Since we basically went off the gold standard, the US government here specifically has been printing massive amounts of money and this has all resulted, you know, these are a bunch of charts here in the middle class losing purchasing power and basically becoming more and more subject to poverty. And especially if you are in the lower class here and you are dependent on fixed income, you have no savings, well, you're going to be screwed here once the inflation starts to go rampant, because then you will actually see housing prices go even higher and food price even going higher. And that is the cost that we have to pay for printing up these assets bubbles to much and much higher prices. And if they just continue to print and print more money, you're going to see the middle class diminishing more and more. You're going to see a lot of homeless people on the street because they can no longer pay for their housing, for their rent, or maybe even for their food. So food banks as well, you're going to see huge lines at food banks because people can no longer pay the high prices that we have to pay for food because their income 
stays fixed. They're not making any more money. They as well mostly don't have any assets. And so they're definitely not benefiting from the current big asset bubble that is basically being paid by them. So as well the working hours that you have to do to actually buy a share of the S&P 500 was very average here about 30 from 1860 all the way to 1980. And then we went off the gold standard. The government started printing more and more money. And what you can see is that stock prices went to the roof and you have to work about 120 hours to buy an S&P 500 shares. So basically the stock market is just becoming too overvalued for the middle classes and the lower classes even more. And you know, they're not benefiting here from this massive asset bubble that we have seen in the last 10 years. You know, only the rich people, the people here on the top, they're benefiting massively from these QE programs. But um, yeah, the people in the middle class, the lower class, they have to work more and more hours to buy shares. And eventually they're basically forced to keep dollars. They can no longer participate here in the stock market. That is going to further increase the inequality gap. Now you can already see that home prices here in the US have increased about 50% in the last few months. This is going to go even up more and more guys. Um, we're going to see housing prices maybe even up 50 to 100% because the government can print more houses. So you potentially will see that people will actually start buying homes because they're scared of inflation. And again, that's going to overall cause housing prices to go up. And so rents will go up. And especially if you don't have any assets and you're in the middle class, you're dependent on a fixed income. You will have to pay more and more for a decent standard of living. So again, um, going back here to YouTube, you know, it is great that we're right now making profits on Bitcoin, on Dogecoin, on Ethereum, XRP. But just understand what is right now going on in the economy is going to be very important. We are going to see probably some kind of a high inflation and Bitcoin is still the best hedge against this guys. There's a wild speculation going on on the stock market in the crypto market. This is because we're seeing these massive assets bubbles in the stock market and as well in the housing market. I think the end is going to be hyperinflation. I think the government is going to keep printing and printing because deflation is going to ruin the economy so much that I think that they're going to continue and continue to print because they hope that in the future they can fix it. But I believe the end goal is hyperinflation. So again, here, get rich with crypto from Jason. You're seeing these kind of YouTube videos all over YouTube. It almost kind of made me depressed here in the last few weeks. Like, do I want to keep making these TA videos? Because I feel there's so much more going on in the economy and people have to learn that it's not about getting rich. It's about not getting poor. So I would say you can definitely make a lot of money right now speculating on the stock market, on altcoins. But in the end, make sure that you hold at least a little bit of Bitcoin or some gold so you have inflation hedge assets. And so if the whole economy, it breaks down, you can at least still protect yourself against a big economic crisis. So I'm not a financial advisor, but that's what I would personally do. And if you're right now on a fixed income and you have barely any assets and you have maybe a few altcoins, I would definitely be careful about what is right now going on. Because if hyperinflation is going to hit, you're potentially going to be hurt the most. Even just buying 0.1 Bitcoin, 0.2, I guess the prices are right now quite high. You know, back in the day, it was quite actually easy to do this but at least 0.1, 0.2 Bitcoin are enough to protect yourself against potential inflation. At least it will keep you going for a few years. And eventually, you know, the economy is going to recover again. We will go through this crisis, just like we've known with any crisis. So you don't need an infinite amount of Bitcoin, but at least keep some money in assets and definitely uh, don't keep money on the bank. That's just my opinion. Again, no advice here, but I would say that if you're going to do that, you are potentially going to get very much wrecked here. So yeah, this was the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something today. Make sure to like and subscribe and join the free telegram. The link is in the description and I hope to see you guys here in my next video. Bye bye.